The psychedelic revolution is here. If you want to integrate your visionary experiences into your purpose, get clear on your entrepreneurial path and help people while you do what you love, then this podcast is for you. Welcome to The Psychedelic Entrepreneur, medicine for these times. I'm your host, Beth Weinstein. I'm a spiritual business coach, three-time entrepreneur, and a lifelong student of psychedelics and sacred plant medicines. You carry your own unique medicine, and your medicine is what we need for these times. This podcast will help you to share your medicine so you can create transformation in the world. Listen in on conversations with psychedelic leaders, change makers, and conscious entrepreneurs who are living proof that a better world is possible when you follow your heart and live in alignment with your soul. Welcome back to Medicine for These Times. I am so happy to have my former True Path Entrepreneur, a group mastermind program client, Joy, with us here today. Hi, Joy. Thank you for being here. Hello. Yay. It's so good to have you on. I cannot wait to hear more of your story. So let me tell the audience a little bit about you. Joy Whitmore is a psychedelic integration coach and an IFS informed practitioner rooted in indigenous wisdom and holistic well-being. As an instructor for Martha Beck's Wayfinder Life Coach School, Joy employs time-honored teaching methods to guide individuals towards discovering their authentic selves. Deeply engaged with the concept of the reality roadmap, They offer a unique framework that harmonizes spiritual and personal growth. A significant focus of Joy's practice involves researching the profound impact of music on psychedelic journeys, tapping into ancestral knowledge, and the transformative power of sound. And I will have Joy's information right here in the show notes if you want to reach out to her. But Joy, I always find it so fun to interview my clients on this show Um, because of course I know a lot about you. We spent 12 months together. We got to go really deep. I got to witness you blossom and, you know, grow, but I never know these small details of how you got here. Um, I know you did for your other job, but how'd you get into, you know, the Martha Beck coaching school and, um, the psychedelic work, the IFS work, like what's your story that brought you to want to be of service to others like this? Well, I mean, there's there's definitely two phases to that story. And the first phase was as a young girl, there was a lot of trauma. There was a lot of stuff where I grew up in North Carolina. Um, there was racism. There were things like that. And I internalized a lot of that. And a lot of young people in high school um, have to internalize things. And it was when I had my first psychedelic journey at 17, where I in later years, realized looking back, that helped me heal some of that without even knowing about it. And so it wasn't until many, many years later, an integration phase of my life, where I reflected and I was like, wait a minute, you know, this piece of myself that I felt ashamed of, and that I thought was something I should never share with anyone, was actually a piece of my healing that was so integral to becoming whole that I was just like, how do I learn more? How do I go deeper down this rabbit hole? And so I started untangling from my corporate world and all of the conditioning and all the veil. And I just started looking for magic. And magic led me to Martha Beck's books. And I started realizing, hey, wait a minute. There are other people out there that have some of the same experiences that I do. And, you know, one thing led to another. And the next thing I know, I'm in, I'm in life coach school. And then I rolled right into master coach school. And it was in that place where I had just done a workshop on shame and how shame can be your greatest superpower. And I was talking with Martha Beck and she said, you know, I think this is a great idea that people who have done a psychedelic journey need more than just that actual experience. They need support. They need to understand how does this experience change and shift my journey, my life journey. And um, that was it for me. I was like, it was the confirmation that I needed. And that was in so in line with when I met you. It was like I had been following you and there was your program. And I just knew that this was where my passion was and that with my experience with what I had been through and my knowledge that there was something to helping guide people on this journey for themselves. 
Mm. So amazing and so big. Um, you know, and I I knew about the Martha Beck and the the psychedelic work, but I didn't know these small details of the story. And I also knew, you know, you had the this corporate job, which um, you were one of my few clients who actually liked your job. You you have been lucky. <laughs> like it wasn't it wasn't horrible. It was just um, from from I think from what I remembered, it was like okay, I'm ready for more. And you've been through these programs, and I'm curious. When you joined the mastermind, you know, you had gone through the Martha Beck training and, you know, had this interaction. What was your, like, where were you at and where are you now? And what was your goal for joining the program? Because I don't think you've fully quit your job yet because you don't no. really want to. No, I, I have flexibility. Um, I do have an engineering brain. So there's a part of me that still likes to play with that stuff. So it supports what I do right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what was the second part of what you asked? Yeah, it was, just lost it was it. like when you started, you were here and then where are you now? Like, where did you start before you joined the mastermind and, and what are you up to these days with your work? Well, I have to say, I mean, I'm not trying to plug your mastermind, but I'm going to, <laughs> I was looking, I was like, I've got this amazing passion. I know that I have the experience and knowledge to help people or support them. And then I had been following you. And I was like, I need that additional piece. I need to know how to speak about what it is that I do. I need to be in a community of like-minded people. I needed guidance from you. And there was a lot of little pushes that you gave. But not only that, you brought in so many great like guest speakers and um, healers. And those things catapulted me as well. The astrology reading was amazing. It really helped me see things that I wasn't seeing because of my own veil. And so like you were kind of my um, plant medicine there in the beginning for my business. Yeah. And that's and what I'll, changed. Yeah. I was going to say, I'll never forget. I think you were um, that year, you were one of the first people to get a client. Cause I remember being like, what? Like, wow, that was quick. Like, what did you even do? Um, I'm curious, you know, cause didn't you, you had like a first experience or a first client um, and it was kind of like easy, at least from my perspective, I'm like, wow, that was easy. I'm curious, like, has it been kind of natural to you since being in the mastermind to just kind of step into this or do you still come up with, you know, fears or doubts or limiting beliefs? That's a great question. I, I feel like there's a part of me that arrives in any situation and it's just ready to go. It's knowing it's calm. It, it's what it's wise. And then there's still that part of me that has the doubts and has the, you know, will I be able to support this person? What if what this happens and so on. But again, that's where the tools come into place. That's where we what we learned in your mastermind helped what I've learned in my trainings has helped. And not everybody's journey is the same. And so it the first one was pretty easy. I did get lucky. But you said expect magic as soon as you sign up. And that literally the next week, someone reached out to me, I put a free listing on cyclable.com. And someone in my local area said, I know that you haven't had much experience, but I'm willing to give you the opportunity because you know, your story and they heard other podcasts. And so they just went with their gut, which is what I hope to attract those type of people who want to believe more in the body and trust their gut and their instincts and intuitions. I love it. It's so good. And yeah, there is a certain amount of magic where it's like just making that commitment to your up level alone always produces some kind of magic. I've seen this every time for years. Um, but Joy was, you know, I will say you were also very um, just kind of open, you know, like open to coaching. I think it helps that, you you know, you've gone through Martha Beck's program. You knew what to expect on some level. And you're kind of like a yes person and a very positive person. So I love that. But let's talk about the work that you do. Um, you know, you like, you know, I, I want you to be able to share about the work that you do with people, but you have this kind of um, integrative approach with not only plant medicines, but also what you've learned through the Martha Beck training and the IFS work. Um, tell us a little bit about your program or your offer when you work with people. Like, what is the work you're helping people with? 
Yeah. So I really believe that some of the keys to the things that people are having struggles with, challenges with, um, anxiety, not feeling like they fit in in the world, it's all broken pieces of our shattered selves. And when we try and push those pieces away, we actually do ourselves not so great service. So my program is to not only create a container for clients where they can come in, they don't have to like tell me their story every single time. There's kind of a process where I say, you know, come in, unpack your bag. Every time you come, leave a little piece. And we work with those pieces throughout three months is my, is my recommended shortest package, but six months sometimes. Um, in that process, allowing someone to like have a place to leave their stuff, but then also looking forward into, okay, now I've unpacked this stuff. How do I integrate? How do I bring all of my pieces together? That Back to the shame piece is a big part of what I work with. A lot of people I work with are in their late 40s, 50s, 60s, and they come from very conditioned backgrounds and upbringings. You got to do things this way. You got to clean your plate. There's starving people in Africa, like fear, drugs are bad, all these things. And so there's a lot of unpacking. And those are, those are my core clients because they really need permission to be who they are. They really need permission to find those pieces of themselves. That 16 year old with pink hair or, you know, all of the things that we were ashamed of or that we thought were shameful. My goal is to help people find them, embrace them and bring them back to wholeness. And that's a big piece of the internal family systems, um, psychedelic integration piece that I really, really, really love working with. And not only that, it's like in the beginning, I was like, there's no way that talking to pieces of ourselves, people are going to think this is crazy. And it has been so amazing to watch clients unfold and almost like open up like a lotus flower, these different petals of being and learn that they're all parts of the whole and really see how that then brings them the ability to take that elevator up to a higher level. Uh, so good. And, um, you know, I've, I've been informally trained in a training program um, on IFS and there is a reason why it is a, a very well-known and popular integration tool. For those that haven't done it, I highly recommend working with someone like Joy because it is a whole other perspective on understanding yourself, your psyche, your path, your life, and really being able to make the profound permanent changes and shifts. I, I actually love telling the story how I had one of my biggest breakthroughs was with a, only a half a gram of psilocybin and doing IFS work with, um, you know, two people in my training program. Like we weren't even really trained <laughs> and it, we still had these huge breakthroughs. So imagine working with someone who actually knows who's trained. Um, it's huge. Now I'm curious and I, I love that you have this like three month or six month option because we all know it takes time to transform. And I'm wondering how much of the work you're doing is really fueled by the psychedelic experience itself versus the prep and the integration and the coaching and the IFS. Like how much would you say is like, how, how is, are the psychedelics that important? You like, do people even need them? Like where, where do you I, think they fit in? Yeah. I love this question because some people come to me and others, I'm sure, and say, you know, I want to work on this. And they feel like psilocybin, which is what I work with, is going to be that, magic pill. And I hate to use those words because other people come in and just think, oh, this is going to help me solve this issue. And when it doesn't, it's all the other stuff. So when you ask how much of the psychedelic part is it with this journey, 25%, maybe 30%. And, you know, I don't like to always tell people that because you don't want to put it out there. It's, it's something that needs to unfold again, because sometimes the journeys are not pretty. Sometimes the things that come up in these journeys, especially with psilocybin, are things that need to be surfaced in order to move forward and, you know, get that off your back, get the monkey off your back. So I think a huge part of it is, you know, the internal family systems. Um, there's EFT work, there's breath work, there's, you know, finding ways to help clients navigate day to day, which is completely in addition to the psychedelic experience itself. 
This is great because I actually wanted to ask about, um, you know, this roadmap technique and how you would bring together what you've learned in Martha Beck's training program. And, you know, like you actually still work there from what I understand, like you're a, a coach or a teacher within the program, right? Instructor. Yes. Yeah. Instructor. That's it. So then how do you, um, how do you bring that into the psychedelic work? You know, how does this get integrated in? Is it, and you know, like, let's say people are coming to you dealing with, um, shame or disconnection or depression or having no meaning in life or, you know, like in their mid forties or early fifties, like questioning everything. Um, how does, how does what you've learned in the other training and with this roadmap, kind of play a part in what the work is that you do? Like, what is oh, it all about? I'm curious. Great question. Well, er again, everybody's journey is different. So I kind of, as a guide, I like to work with the person to understand where are they coming from? Because if I know where they're coming from, I can help them kind of find their way. It's never a set path. That's the most important thing. There's kind of like, hey, we're going to go through these three stages, one of which is preparation, the next of which is the actual journey. And the next is the integration. And however those phases fall together is that person's roadmap. And the, some of the tools I've learned along the way have been really great. And some of those have been um, dream analysis. Because with psychedelics, we often get like really colorful, powerful dreams, which help us get outside of our conscious because our subconscious gives us other messages. And people don't know how to interpret those. And it's not as easy as going to a book and saying, here's a <laughs> dream book and here's the symbol and the snake means this. There's work that can be done that really helps the person kind of do parts work with the symbols that come up in dreams. That's one of my favorite tools that I've learned from the Martha Beck training. Um, and some of her tools also come from IFS kind of influenced um, subjects and um yeah, um, not as many somatics, but I bring somatic work in separately to that also. Yeah. That's amazing. I had no idea that Martha Beck kind of integrated IFS kind of work into her work. So good to know. Um, and you're right, you know, everybody's experience is different. And so, of course, there's a lot to dive deep into and the interpretation. And I love this idea of bringing parts work into dreams, which I had never thought of. I'm like, do I do that? Um, I actually had a really amazing dream the other night that I was like really diving into and trying to understand like, okay, what is the message in this for me? And, um, that was actually essentially what ended up happening. It was like, oh, this is this part of me and understanding like the projections that were happening and the need that wasn't being met and blah, 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 you know, like going deep into this analysis just from a simple dream. So I love that you bring that in, um, because you know, it's very similar to the psychedelic space. So let's ask, um, you know, the kind of people that you work with, do you have any stories of a client, obviously don't name their name, but like the kind of miracle story, like they felt this way and then they worked with you and then they ended up this way. Like what is the, can you tell us or share us one story of a client that went from here to here, like, and what that was all about? I have so many magical stories, but um, there's two that come to mind, one of which I'll share um, I think some of the most uh, inspiring stories are where someone has a challenging journey. And so I have one client who did microdosing for three months and then I flew to her and she had a journey and I, you know, I'm very, you know, engaging with the client. Hey, if you need to be touched, if you need to be held, you know, there's a, there's going to be some sort of communication and confirmation and this person just needed to be held. And they literally cried for like four hours. And they were so embarrassed. And I just knew. I just knew. I was like, it's fine. And a couple months later, it was just everything unfolded. Like that was what was necessary. That purging, that letting go, that emotional release was everything that person need. And they needed to let it happen in a safe place. And they needed the time afterwards to really understand that what happened was okay. And that was necessary for them to proceed and move forward on their own personal journey. And um, just, you know, at the end of six months of working with this person, just to watch the way they interacted with their kids, their family, their work situation. And, but to see, knowing in that, in that moment that that journey was particularly 
tough for them and hold them with compassion and, you know, curiosity and just know that that was going to unfold. That's magic to me. I I mean, it it doesn't sound that great because some people are like, yes, I want to go on this journey in my head and it's brilliant and there's objects. And I, I think the bigger magic is really seeing someone have a transformation that was unexpected. And um, yeah, it, it, that to me is really the beauty. And I love that it, it affects their family. It affects their whole life. And, you know, like you say, it's unexpected. And sometimes we all know these journeys can be hard. I think there's a lot of people that think, um, you know, working with a facilitator or doing psychedelic therapy is just going to mean feeling better immediately. And I'm curious what you think about that because um, it, it's like who knows what could come up. And <laughs> sometimes you might spend five hours crying. But what, you know, what about the the healing of the purge, the release, the like diving into the discomfort? Does that happen for a lot of your clients? And is this like what do you think of the this notion of going into the 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 pain, the agony, the discomfort in a psychedelic journey? You know, everybody's journey, I think the, the mushrooms speak and the mushrooms tell you what is necessary for your healing. And I believe if someone has stuff to unpack, that's going to be what's going to come up. There's going to be journeys where I've had a client that travels to Egypt and goes in the pyramids and has, you know, a beautiful, amazing journey. But when it comes to getting that stuff out, like that gunk at the bottom I think that's where I really enjoy being with others because I can hold that space. It's one thing for someone to have a beautiful, everything is great journey, but to be able to be in that space and hold it and keep myself separate from that energy, I think is, is definitely um, what I enjoy doing. Hey everyone, just a quick break to remind you that the True Path Entrepreneur Group Mastermind Program is open for enrollment now. We start at the beginning of 2024 in January, but we are starting to take applications now. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out the Mastermind webpage on my site at bethaweinstein.com slash mastermind. This is a 12-month group community-oriented mastermind program where you learn how to start, grow, and get clients in your business so that you can help more people, make a difference in the world, and do work that you absolutely love. This mastermind program is designed for new and early stage coaches, healers, psychedelic entrepreneurs, therapists, and anybody who wants to do transformational work in the world and wants to learn the exact steps you need to know to grow your business to the next level, to be able to share your unique medicine and make a difference in the world. So again, that's bethaweinstein.com slash mastermind. The True Path Entrepreneur Group Business Coaching Mastermind Program is open now. I mean, it's just so beautiful to see you like grow and making it happen. And now, you're, you know, you have clients that fly you places and your work has really spread very quickly. And it's been for you like um, what I would call on the easier side. I mean, I'm sure it hasn't always been easy, but I'm curious, like, what are the limiting beliefs you used to come up against that you don't come up against anymore? Or I, I'm curious, like, what have you noticed are like the newer limiting beliefs and how do you handle them? Like as an entrepreneur, as a facilitator, as, you know, an instructor in Martha Beck's program, like you're in this this really strong position of leadership and holding space for others. Yeah. Like, what has that journey of your own personal growth been to be able to do all this? Oh, wow. It's ongoing. It has to be ongoing. I mean, every client interaction I have, every training interaction I have as an instructor reflects something often that I'm dealing with. And I I take a pause and go, oh, shit, I'm dealing with that too. And time to go get coached, time to go meet with my group of people because there's something in it for me. So I truly believe, and that's one thing that I have such a passion about in this work is that I see so many um, facilitators or guides and they're just, you know, kind of funneling people in and out and they're not doing anything to protect their energy or their space or take care of themselves. And, you know, there's still 
that conditioning of let's make money, let's do the machine work, you know, let's work like a machine. And I just, I find that my body somehow I'm so grateful. It just says, no, you've got, you've got to do this time for you to take in some of what you just witnessed and do it for yourself. So I have a really great um, biofeedback in my own body that continually says, okay, you just witnessed this. There might be a piece of you in that story that you've witnessed so that you can go in within and heal. And so for me, it's constant because if I'm able to have that experience, it's likely that the next week a client will say, oh, I just dealt with this. And I'm like, okay, I was there. I was able to see my own part in that and my own projection and work through it and come back a little more healed every time. So it's, yeah, it's huge. And that is honestly, you could, there, there needs to be a whole entire program teaching that. Cause I think a lot of people don't understand this concept. That was actually one of the first things I learned in the training program I did was this on this concept of, um, you know, as someone of service. And I already knew this as being a coach that I would see so much mirror of myself and my clients and my clients going through something and then having to look at it in myself and having it expedite my own path to, you know, healing and transformation of that exact thing. And it's this kind of like, you know, we're, we're in this together. You know, I've never believed in hierarchy of the guru, especially honestly with psychedelic facilitators you know, there's, it's a weird world out there where there's, like you said, people stuck in that programming of like, oh, well, I'll just churn people in and out for a few thousand dollars and send them on their way. And, you know, maybe what good does it do? Maybe it's great. Maybe it's not. But to really like be aware of what's coming up and be in that witness state of, of also doing your own work, you know, because that's part of it. I actually just spoke to someone about this the other day about how there's, I believe a lot of people in these positions of holding space for transformation that maybe like quit doing their own work and or like think they're good and then something yeah and it's almost like that's that's not only not serving but it's kind of a danger to others you know it could it could turn into that so i i really love what you say this is so golden um the other thing i wanted to ask about as well because i remember you know when you came into the mastermind program and you know, you wanted to get in a holding space, but you were also already a coach and already trained and all these, you know, these other modalities. Um, Something that I teach is beyond just facilitation. And it's amazing. Some people that have joined my new mastermind program for 2024, which starts in a few months. um, (laughs) It's amazing to hear how many people are joining that have been underground facilitators that are already getting really burnt out. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because there's not only burnout, but then also the fact that it's like maybe a feast and famine where there's some months that are good and some months that is bad. And then you can't really totally go crazy advertising it because it's, you know, illegal in most places still. Um, you know, have you dealt with any of this and what's come up for you around like making this into a sustainable business that still like, you know, energizes you and inspires you? Yeah. In the beginning, I was in that mindset. I was like, I need five clients a month and I need to do this. And then, and and then when I started experiencing as I was deepening the work and I started experiencing picking up on others energies and having transference even um, with mother issues, that's when I said, okay, you know, there's gotta be a buffer. And I had to really, again, go back, get myself coached, get work with a therapist, do all of the things because without that buffer, without me returning to my center, how can I hold space for other people? How can I enter into an energetic relationship, even if it's for a few hours, if I can't come in completely clean for that person? And so I started realizing it doesn't fit into this model of the hamster wheel. I can't have five clients a week and still have space for myself to process, for myself to clear my own energy to sage the room and these things. And especially it might not be for everyone, but for me, I learned the more I worked with people, the more that I was able to pick up their energy. I mean, so much so that I had a client who had digestive issues and I didn't clear my energy or like even think about it. Like she's so sweet. This will be great. And then in the middle of it, without even knowing I'm starting to have like these tremendous digestive issues 
And luckily her daughter was there and she says, you're having my mom's digestive problems. And I had no idea. And so I was like, okay, I, this is a pure, and this was a, a retreat where I had done a few people in a row. So again, it was just reflecting back to me. Great. You want to help, you want to serve, you want to support, but guess what? You're going to take some of this energy on and you've got to figure out a way to make space for it. So, you know, I would say to, to, it's just so important. The more that we are in touch with our oneness, the more that we can be one with others in the world. And so it, it doesn't reduce the amount of income. When you show up aligned and in, in, in a space of centeredness, it flows. The, the abundance flows with that. And it may not show up in places that you didn't, ex- that you expected either. Um, that's, and that's exactly what I am so glad to hear you say, because it's exactly what I try to teach inside of the mastermind where, yes, there's some realities of the practical and the, the kind of 3D earth realm of running a business. But a huge part of this is really like who you, who you be, how you show up, you know, understanding, especially those that are working in the psychedelic space, understanding like, are you really being that clear channel for coming from a, a pure place of service versus some other attachment or need or want or making this all about you or whatever it is, you know, and, and you've probably heard me say this, like the people that come in to coaching, healing, psychedelic work from this place of just trying to get, like get, get money, get clients, get the, the it's like, um, <clears throat> the energy is not pure, you know, and very often and actually, um, you know, like it doesn't attract, it like repels the energy more than anything. And people pick up on that, especially facilitators. You know, it's like the last thing I think anybody wants is to sit in a psychedelic space with a burnout facilitator. I mean, that, that idea of hearing that, well, I don't enjoy it anymore and these are getting tiring and then I'm getting burnt out and I can't make, I can't make money unless I do a certain amount of sessions every month. I'm like, that's kind of scary. I mean, I personally, and this is why I keep talking about it more. And I've actually interviewed some people who have, um, who are part of psychedelic training programs, like the legal ones. And even they say, there's only so many sessions anybody can do like it, physically. And then, you know, energetically is a huge part that I'm so glad you're talking about. So, um, I love that you're mentioning this and I love to witness how far you've come. And I'm curious, you know, your business has taken off. You've really shown up as a leader in the Martha Beck school. You are still, um, you've kind of arranged it. So your job is kind of working for you now. I'm curious, how have you noticed that you've changed as a person since like making this commitment and just going all in and being in the mastermind and now you're a while out of the mastermind? Like what changed inside of you? Wow. You have such good questions, Beth. <laughs> I mean, so much. I, I think first and foremost, the conditioning that was in front of me, the veil that was in front of me that I've got to be all these different things to different people that I have to show up a certain way that I have to wear a certain mask. Um, and that I have to always be available. That was the biggest one. And it's actually an, an interesting dynamic because the more that I set boundaries with my availability and you taught us this, um, in our, in our mastermind, um, keeping your boundaries clean, keeping yourself in alignment with those boundaries, because that's been actually the biggest piece of my work is that I tell people, you can reach out to me anytime, but I'll have my notifications turned off. So I give them a space at least, hey, you can send a message, you can, you know, leave this, this piece of your backpack that you need to unpack, which is between our sessions or whatever. But it's been that it's been the boundaries, it's been being able to know who I am and show up as who I am and not be afraid and like, stop hiding. Um, it, those are the biggest things. I was so afraid right before I started your mastermind. I thought I'm just going to be a coach who builds websites. I had just relegated myself to this basic role because my shame was so great. And now through, you know, the program and my, my coaching and my instructing, I just, and the medicine, I just feel like, I've just been able to take a step back and really watch my story, you know, as if I'm totally immersed and, you know, and just 
see life as that story, you know, and watch it unfold and not be so attached to it. And that's a place of freedom, Beth. <laughs> that's it. That's the gold right there. I love it. It's like to, to be stuck in that fear and also keep yourself playing small. Of like, oh, I'll just, I have these coaching certifications and done all this training, but I'll just build websites for coaches or healers or whatever it is, and, or maybe do some coaching on the side. But I'm curious, you know, do you feel like there was, there was something in the mastermind <clears throat> that got you to stop playing small and step out of your fears? And I'm wondering if, are you able to pinpoint what it maybe was? Uh, you know, there was a, I think there was a couple things. One was the heart research. I will really have to say that really pushed my boundaries where we get to, instead of determining what we think people need, really finding out what people really need and want and having that interview process and learning. And, and that to me was a big piece because number one, I was scared to death. You had to push us so many times to do that. And then finally, once I did it, I started to realize you know, not only just learning what people wanted and needed, but how I communicate with people, how I connect with people. So it opened up another channel of connection. And I, and then I'd have to say, Brian, you know, bringing Brian in, what Brian shared with me and the visions for my um, Saturn return, or I forget what it was. Uh, yeah. For the, re yeah. The solar return. Oh yeah. And it just, he, he said and saw things kind of like the way I try to help people see things that they don't see inside themselves. He was able to pull out things and kind of hold it up and say, Hey, you're missing all this light that you're ready to shine. And I don't want you to miss that anymore. And so it was like all of that. It was you pushing us out of our comfort zone. And then also like, you know, being amongst people who are doing this work and serious and have all kinds of amazing passions and strengths and experience. I mean, I love the mastermind. It's great. <laughs> oh, and we loved you. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you definitely said it. It's like being in that community, having someone to help you get out of your comfort zone, stop playing small. And also, yeah, boundaries are big. Um, that's, I think that's a, actually a very important lesson for these times that we live in, but also definitely for anybody who works in the psychedelic space. And it's not, you know, it's not from that place of like not helping. It's, it's, I see boundaries as, as actually being of service, you know, to understand like you're being taken care of, the other's being taken care of. And if you're not being really nourished and supported energetically, financially, um, you know, with your own life, then how are you able to serve? So the more that you have these these strong boundaries and strong understanding of your sense of who you truly are. This is why the program's called True Path. Then you're better able to serve, you know, especially when you're doing this deep work with people's souls, you know, like you're helping people get to these spots that they probably wouldn't be able to get to on their own. So I'm curious, what is next for you? You know, like, to me, I see you completely blowing up. I mean, you've already blown up so quick, so fast, you know, just like when we last caught up, I was like, wow, there's like so much happening. And by the way, Joy's not out there posting on social media every day either, which I love, no. I love pointing out. You're doing it <laughs> the other way, which yes. is very possible when you learn the how, but yeah, what's, what's coming up next for you? Well, so I'm glad you asked because yes, right now my network is referral and I've been doing these customized retreats. Like I, I fly to locations and, or people fly into me. So my next step is next year is a really big retreat. And that's going to be in Costa Rica or in Mexico, um, details to follow, but more of that and more of people who can get together in that kind of environment and thrive from watching each other go through the experience. So it's going to be a curated kind of thing. You know, those people kind of all come together anyway, which I think is perfect. Um, and yeah, definitely retreats, definitely some fun stuff. I'm not sure about an online program. I don't know if people are interested in that, but it's time to do some more heart research and find out. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And I, I love that. Here's the thing. You can build a, a business word of mouth referral, but unless you have the, the grounding and the clarity around what is your offer, who is it for, how is it different, then you're still not going to know, you know how to offer it to someone. Why would someone say yes? 
So I do want to point out that you don't need social media when you really learn the, the root, like the root chakra of your business and get it grounded where you're clear, you have clarity. And so that your ideal clients have clarity and they realize like, oh, this is the person that I want to help. And when you go to fill a retreat, whether you do it just through word of mouth or maybe have to start putting it out there in the world, it's, it's the same process. You know, there's a certain amount of like the root chakra earth plane business sense that you have to have in order to make it, make it a success. So Joy, I am yes. so excited for you. And Thank all you. And also, I, yeah. want, I, I do want, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but okay. I do want to say that there will be a book. I think it's so important to explore the effect of music and psychedelics because not only can it be so great within the ceremony, within integration, but it can just bring you back to just places and feelings and emotions. And for people who have problems expressing anger and other tough emotions, it can be very helpful for that. So I will, I look forward to publishing a book next year on that as well. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Well, Joy, I am so proud of you. Everybody will be able to reach out to you. We're going to have your contact information right here in the show notes. I love witnessing how far you've come, where you've grown, you walking your true path. You seem so much more aligned and light and, and just joyful than ever, even though you're always a, a yes, you know, like someone who is easily coachable. And this is what you get, you know, when you just show up for yourself and show up for the world and get into that place of alignment, it does become a lot easier. And thank you so much for being an example and an inspiration and doing this deep work with your clients because this is the medicine we need. This is, this is the work. And I am so grateful for you. And I'm grateful for you, Beth, because what you are teaching and what you're doing in your mastermind and your free, even your free classes is just, I'm, I'm trickling it everywhere. So people who maybe can't afford it right now are getting tons of free, good resources and, and it's very inspirational. So thank you, Beth. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you're feeling inspired, I'd appreciate it if you showed your love with a review. And check out my YouTube channel where you can find the video version of this podcast. You can also head to BethAWeinstein.com to learn more about me and grab my free business growth trainings. Remember, you carry your own unique medicine and your medicine is what we need for these times.